last year on this panel that we were expecting too much, that Obama was a politician, number one. And I think at that time I also said that even if he wanted to make those changes, that it was impossible, I believe, because of the way this government is constructed and because of the control over the people that we elect by corporations. So one only would have to think, you can go back to Abraham Lincoln's letter to Colonel Wilkins when he mentioned that corporations become so entwined in government that it would be the demise of the republic. That's the problem that we have. We often blame people and not blame ourselves because throughout history we have allowed this government to persecute us in a sense. Even though the Declaration of Independence states that when a government is destructive of the means that it's supposed to give us the life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, that it's the duty of the people to even change or abolish it. And we have not moved to do either of those things. We set and hope that someone will eventually come and bring the change when we are really the change that we seek because if we don't do it, it won't get done. And that is the way it is, the way it has been. When I first started looking at this administration, when people were first being appointed to different cabinet positions, I thought of an old car engine. I say, if you got a motor that's broken down, you don't take the old parts out and grease them and stick them back in. <laughs> you get new parts. But what did he do? He recycled the same dead beats from Bush's era and from Clinton's era. From the Secretary of Defense on. He put a new few people in that were new, but not enough. So how can you expect change with the same people that are in the position they are in that have been denying change for all these years? So again, they go back to us, the people. I'm one that believes that it will take revolution in this country to bring change. And I'm not speaking of getting weapons and going out because we couldn't compete because of the military, the police department. And for God, I think, is one of the things that many people don't know about that's happening in this country. But we have to go and take this government back. And there is a way to do it, and I believe Obama could have been instrumental in bringing change had he only called on the people when he needed them, say, for single payer. When people throughout this country was crying for single payer, he stood by and did nothing. Even though his election was not a campaign, it was a movement. He had people that came out that had never voted before. People that were enthusiastic because they felt that history would be made, and it was made. But that's all that happened. We have a man of color in the White House. So we gotta stop telling ourselves that eventually change will come if we keep electing Democrats and Republicans, because it hasn't come. And I think if one listened to the answer that Obama gave at this Republican convention in Philadelphia a few days ago, they'll understand that. When he says the words that we are not too far apart on the main issues, the central issues. So it should tell you something. It should ring a bell that these parties 
or like a coin, the flip side, or like a fight where you figure, if I got to get hit, do I want to get hit with the left hook or the right cross? Because that's all this two-party system is. <laughs> blame someone else for the problems that we create by not taking part in what will bring the change that we are seeking. One have to think about what Martin Luther King said, that people have to have their own convictions, but they must protest, and we don't have enough of it. When you live in a system where defense spending takes most of the money of the budget, and education is set aside, and military recruitment is rampant in the schools, the high schools, where they have 100% access to young people, and even in the middle schools, 